I don't even know where to start. And I then I didn't go to bed. I'm still gonna eat my cookies and cream and I'm gonna enjoy every bite. So I'm doing this real blind. No prologue should be 45 minutes too long. Hi, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, channel is all things bookish, behind the scenes business, and just, you know, little snippets of my life. I'm gonna be going over my quarter one reads, which I'm a little bit behind getting this up. This is gonna be from January until March. One book, I read most of it in December, but I finished it in January, so I actually did count it for my 2023, but I haven't really talked about it, so I don't think. If I did, I'm sorry. This is ooh, the stack. I don't have my glasses on, so I'm doing this real blind. First up was Queen of Shadows. I did read most of this in December, but I finished it in January. So I did give this one five stars. This is my favorite so far of the Throne of Glass series. I haven't continued on quite yet. I started the tandem read, but I got like five chapters in, um, and then I just needed like a fantasy break, I think. I still need to keep going with with this series, but so far this has been my favorite one. I mean, I've really enjoyed all of them, but it's just this one hits so hard. I'll share a few thoughts that I wrote down while I was reading. Starting strong is, God, I hate Arabin so much. Someone get rid of him already. I don't think I'm alone in that feeling. Next one, if someone doesn't put a sword through Arabin's neck soon, I will find a way into this book and do it myself. Again, I don't think I'm wrong in feeling that way. Queen, the word struck him again. A queen of the realm was in the shadow market and head to toe black and looking more happy, more than happy to start slitting throats. Can you blame her? I got to the part where we kind of meet a lead and I didn't realize that a lead was so connected to Manon, which I really, really am intrigued by and I'm so excited to see where that kind of goes. I really love to lead. Manon is still my favorite, I think. I really love Aelin. I really love Lysandra. Lysandra's moment in this was so good. Rowan and Aelin are like tiffing a little bit. And I said, oh, she said sleep in the bed, I swear to God. And then she walks out in a silk nightgown to prove a point. And then Rowan says, you forgot the bottom part. <laughs> Oh gosh, I love him so much. Rowan is my top Throne of Glass man. Like Cassian is my overall top so far. Obviously, I still haven't finished. I don't see that changing because Cassian just, I love him so much. But Rowan is really climbing the ranks fast. Still have half the series to go, so we shall see what happens. Very excited to keep reading when I kind of have my head wrapped around some more fantasy. Next up, so this was well and truly into the new year. House of Sky and Breath. I DNF'd this three times. The first couple times I could not get past the prologue. No prologue needs to be 45 minutes. That's my take on that. No prologue should be 45 minutes on the audiobook, okay? It's too long for a prologue. That's not a prologue. That's a very long chapter. It's like a couple chapters, you know? I gave this one three and a half stars, especially after book three. It's not a Crescent City girl, I don't think. I really loved the first book. The second book, I loved moments of it. I loved it enough to hopefully have the third one sort of redeem it. That didn't really happen for me, unfortunately, so should there be future Crescent City books, I don't really see myself getting too involved in them. There were parts that I really liked. I loved Rune, I loved Lydia. Lydia's my girl, I love her so much. Um, Rune is my Crescent City man. Bryson Hunt continued to not be it for me. I loved Bryce in the first book. I've never come around on Hunt at all. Just He's just not for me. Bryce I loved in the first book. This book, I was kind of iffy on her. There were parts that I liked, but there were other parts that I was like, oh, not my favorite. And then as we got into this guy, it just, I did read this whole one. I did not read this whole one. 50% of the way through, I believe. Um, I think it's technically 49%, so I did get about, get about halfway through. I loved the first parts, I'm not gonna share any spoilers. The pacing was good, there were parts of it that I just wasn't really understanding too much, like the choices made in terms of, people are gonna get mad at me, world building, magic being for translation, that's not ever gonna work for me, it's, too, it's cheesy, I'm sorry. I don't like it. There was a lot about this one that made it so I just could not continue reading. I mean, maybe down the line, I'll pick it up and finish it. Because I would, I really had no interest in reading it anymore, uh, I allowed myself to be spoiled for it. I looked stuff up, I asked people. I don't think I would have enjoyed it moving forward. I think there may have been a couple scenes that I liked, but knowing what I know, 
obviously I don't have context for everything. The information that I do have pretty much lays it out for me. Like there, there is a couple key things involving a certain relic and Bryce and Hunt and I just, continuity for like between the books and stuff just didn't, it was never gonna work for me. We'll just put it that way. So that one's a DNF. <laughs> if you love it, that is wonderful and I'm very glad because we all should have book series that we love. That one just, it wasn't clicking for me. Avatar and Throne of Glass I think are my absolute bangers. Crescent City, kind of missed the mark. I will live forever happy in the first book for Crescent City because I did really enjoy Earth and Blood. Just those second two, not my not my cup of tea. I had a little bit of a break in February. Hofast kind of put me out of commission for reading. I had, had no desire to read. Um, I, was, I think I was trying so hard to want to read Hofas that it was making it impossible for me to read literally anything else. Next up was The Dead Romantics. I've had this on my shelf for, ow, that actually hurt. I have tabs in the side. Um, I've had this on my shelf for probably over a year, maybe a year and a half at this point. I really, really loved this. After reading Seven Year Slip though, I like this one more. So this one hit so much harder for me, but I love them both. Dead Romantics is like contemporary romance, but with a little bit of magical realism, kind of. It's not like straight contemporary romance. I absolutely recommend this to read, especially if you like contemporary romance, but you also like a little bit of magic. I think this will be right up your street because it's not like too heavy. Also, I would say this one's not too heavy in the romance department either. Um, like it has romance, but it's it really focuses on like the main character and kind of her relationships with everybody as a whole, which I really, really like. So, yes, read this one, I recommend. <laughs> Second one is Seven Year Slip, also contemporary romance, bit of magical realism. Dead Romantic, whoa, Dead Romantics deals with like the main character seeing ghosts, basically. This one is about a time slip. If you know anything about me, you'll know that I have a very deep love for Outlander and the time travel elements and everything like that. I'm a big time travel girly. So a time slip, I was down so bad for a time slip romance. <laughs> it was so good. I read this in one sitting. I didn't put it down. I fully read the whole thing in one sitting. I believe I was up till like 4 a.m. 5 a.m. reading this. Yeah, it was, this has probably been my favorite of the year so far. Again, cause I'm kind of counting Queen of Shadows for last year, so. Favorite of the year so far is this one. I'm obsessed. Absolutely read this. The characters were great. Also, it inspired me to make a lemon pie for the first time and it's now one of my favorite desserts. So not only did I get an excellent book that I absolutely love and cherish, but I also have a new recipe that's a banger of a recipe. So read this one. You won't regret it. I don't think you'll regret it. I don't know your taste, but I won't. I didn't regret it. I love it. And then the last one for this first quarter of reading was this guy. What an interesting book, in a good way. I loved it. I don't even know where to start. This was so much different than what I normally read. I loved every second of it. This was also one that I read almost in one sitting. I think I read it, I read it over like two sittings, but I devoured this, I could not put it down. Another Rowan has entered the boyfriend, book boyfriend chat. <laughs> Although, I don't know if I'm gonna like his brother uh, Lachlan even better. His book is next. I think it comes out this month. I need to double check. Okay, June 4th, so a little bit later. That's the next book. It's kind of a teal color, so anyway. Basically, it's two serial killers who their targets are other serial killers. Like, they go after the lowest pieces of scum on earth and take care of them by murdering them. Then they fall in love. I love it so much. I didn't I didn't think this was gonna be one that I enjoyed. I loved every second of it and I kinda wish I could read it again for the first time. Which is why I'm so excited that I get his brother's book, the next book, which is Leather and Lark. I didn't even say what I rated. Um, Seven Year Slip was like four and a half star. Dead Romantics is probably like 3.75, four. And then this was also a four star. Four star for me is that I really enjoyed it. It will probably stay on my shelf. I will recommend it, so. Oh, it's so good, you should read it. If you should definitely read it if you're okay with darker themes and you're not too squeamish. So if you really love cookies and cream, maybe beware. Despite Bryn's best efforts, 
I'm still gonna eat my cookies and cream and I'm gonna enjoy every bite. <laughs> I think it's a game for Brynn to try to ruin food for her readers. And to that I say challenge accepted because I didn't even really eat orzo. So it's not that ruined. Cookies and cream, I'm good. Someone said that they're worried you might try to ruin pizza in the next book and I say bring it on because it ain't gonna happen. I love pizza. It's not gonna happen. But good luck, Brynn. Try it. Try and ruin it for me. Anyway, that's all the books I read <laughs> in the first quarter. Not many. Not many at all. But I did read some and that's good. And I enjoyed myself. And I think I'm ready to start getting into some more fantasy again. I also am working my way through Happy Place right now. And then I'm also gonna read Funny Story, which is probably one of the most anticipated books I've had for this year is Funny Story by Emily Henry. I'll probably finish Happy Place read funny story and then I'll probably go into some more fantasy. I want to read these two are first on my list. I've been meaning to get to them since like February and it still hasn't happened because February was a wash. I didn't really read much of anything in February. Okay. It was supposed to be February but May. I will read these. I'm very excited to read these. Um, so yeah. That is everything. That's all I read. Thank you for watching. You should go read these, all three of them, because I love them so much and I think you would like them too. If you like contemporary romances with a side of murder. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. Actually, before I fully go, look at my cute jumpsuit. It launched today in the shop if you want it. Oh, get out of my mouth. It launched today in the shop. It's got cutie little straps and like little ruffles up here. And then look, it even has pockets that also have little ruffles on it. I mean, could you, and it's pants. So I mean, so if you wanna look as cute and comfortable as I do, right now, they're on the website. Okay, bye. Also, please go read all of these because they're so good. Also, please go read all of these because they're so good and you're gonna like them, I promise. I promise, actually I don't promise because I don't know